Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Nipples of Venus. That's right, you might remember these delicious Italian treats from such movies as Amadeus and I believe Chocolate. I'm not sure, I didn't make it through the whole movie. But anyway, with Valentine's Day coming up, I thought the timing would be perfect to show you this provocative looking and pretty naughty sounding chocolate confection. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with a very easy first step. And that's gonna to be to cream some butter and sugar together, which I generally use a spatula for, but I just got a new immersion blender that comes with a whisk attachment. So I decided to use that because I thought it would do a much faster and better job. So here we go. Well, that was unfortunate. And since I had no way of knowing how much butter and sugar went on the floor, I was forced to start over. And like I said, for this, I really like to use a spatula. And by the way, if you're wondering if that made me angry, not really. I wasn't really mad. I was more disappointed. But anyway, we'll go ahead and smear that butter and sugar together until the mixture gets nice and light and creamy and looks something like this. And then once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and set that aside and move on to melt some chocolate, which I'll be doing over about an inch of water set over low heat. And since we're gonna coat these with nice, sweet, milky white chocolate, I'm actually gonna use some dark bittersweet chocolate for the insides. And I believe this variety I'm using is 70% cacao. And of course I'm only mentioning that, so I get to say cacao. But anyway, we'll go ahead and let that chocolate sit over that hot water until it looks like just about all that chocolate is melted, at which point we'll go ahead and give that a stir and remove that from the heat. Oh, and I should mention, don't do this step too far ahead of time, since we need this to be in liquid form when we add it to our mixture. But anyway, what we'll do once that's melted is set it aside and move on to the last major ingredient, our chestnuts. And there they are. These have been roasted and peeled, and then apparently vacuum packed. Although more commonly you'll find these canned, which in that case they have to be drained, but will work just as well. And what we'll do before we can use these is add them to a food processor, and grind them up until very, very fine. Or I guess as fine as you want. So I went ahead and pulsed mine on and off, until they look like this. And then once that's set, we'll add that to our sugar butter mixture, and we'll go ahead and stir that all together. And if you've never had chestnuts before, I'm not sure exactly how to describe them. I mean, they kind of have an earthy, nutty-like flavor, but not super nutty like a peanut. So the best thing probably would just be to get some and give them a try, and then you'll know. And yes, it does seem fitting, since we're making something called Nipples of Venus, that we're using chestnuts. And I'm not sure if that was on purpose, but I'd like to think so. Anyway, we'll go ahead and mix that all together, at which point we're going to season this up a little bit with a pinch of salt as well as a very small, very secretive shake of cayenne. Oh yeah, that stuff's a proven aphrodisiac. And then we'll also add a little touch of vanilla extract, the pure and the real, please. And then last but not least, a very generous splash of brandy, or cognac if things are going well. And then we will take a spatula and mix that all together. And then what we'll do to finish this off is once that's all mixed up, we'll go ahead and transfer in our chocolate, which is hopefully still nice and runny, and we will mix all that together. And that's it, our filling is done. Once we have everything combined, this stuff's ready to scoop, which I recommend doing right away because you'll probably get cleaner scoops. See, I ended up waiting a few minutes to set up my camera and this mixture hardens up pretty quickly, which was no big deal, I was still able to scoop these. But you're probably gonna get a smoother surface if you do this while they're a little softer. Having said that, once scooped, we can always roll these in our hands to kind of smooth them out a little bit which is what I ended up doing. But keep in mind, they don't have to be completely smooth since we are gonna coat these in white chocolate. But anyway, what we'll do once our centers are portioned up and smoothed out if necessary, is go ahead and wrap these and pop them in the fridge so they're nice and cold when we coat them with our white chocolate. And preparing that white coating chocolate is the next step. And even though I'm gonna cut and shave off pieces from this bar of white chocolate, those white chocolate chips they sell at the market will work. But what we'll want to do, no matter what white chocolate we use, is separate about 20% of it that we'll use to temper the chocolate after it's melted. So we'll set a little bit aside and transfer the rest into a bowl and place that over the hot water just like we did our dark chocolate. And what we'll want to do is stand there until we think about 75% of that chocolate's melted, which is exactly what I thought I had right here. And when it gets to that point, what we'll want to do is stir it together and then check the temperature. All right, we don't want this to get as hot as we do for dark chocolate. All right, we only want this to get to about 105 to 110 degrees, which is what this feels like to me. But feel free to use a thermometer. And then what we'll do once that portion of white chocolate's melted 
is go ahead and toss in the rest of the white chocolate we reserved. And by stirring that in until it disappears, we've done what they call tempering the chocolate. Which means once this cools onto our centers, it's going to get nice and firm and brittle again. So we will go ahead and stir that together. And once all those pieces of white chocolate have melted, we are now ready to start coating our insides. Which as you remember, we have chilling in the fridge. And for coating these, I like the old two fork, one spoon method. Where we set our center on a fork and then use a spoon to pour over the white chocolate. And then once well coated, we use our second fork to push it off onto a Silpat line baking sheet. And if everything's gone according to plan, you should end up with something that looks like it was coated by a professional. Or at least a semi-professional. Oh, by the way, I'm only doing 12 here, and I'm actually going to freeze the rest of the centers for a future date. So yes, you can make the insides ahead of time, and then just coat them when you want. And if your white chocolate happens to cool down and thicken up, just simply put it over the hot water until you can work with it again. But since I only did 12, I didn't have to do that. And then what we'll do once those are all coated is move on to the final step, and probably most important step, because of the name. We are going to pipe a little pink decoration on the top of each one. And for that, I'm going to use some powdered sugar that I've added just enough milk to to make a very thick but pipeable mixture. And then what we'll do once we think we have the right texture is add a couple drops of red food coloring to create hopefully a nice pretty pink. And I was actually bummed a few drops went on the spoon, but then as I mixed this, I realized that was a good thing. Since this is the pink I wanted, and it would have been too dark if I mixed all that in. So that worked out. And then once we're happy with the consistency and the color, we'll transfer that into a piping bag or just a zip top plastic bag, which we cut the corner off. And we'll go ahead and pipe a little design on the top of each one, with the exact size and shape being up to you. I mean, you are after all the Mozart of your boob art, but anything close to this size and color piped on the top should work out nicely. Just make sure this mixture is nice and thick. Otherwise, when you pipe these on, they're gonna spread out and become too large. And we won't end up with as perky a presentation as we want. But anyway, once decorated, our nipples of Venus, or should I say Capetzele de Venere, are ready to enjoy. Which I'm going to do in these little parchment paper candy cups, which I think look kind of cool. Plus it will help keep everyone's fingers clean. I mean, the last thing you want on Valentine's Day is sticky fingers. And above and beyond their unique and quite provocative appearance, and fun to say giggle producing name, these things are far from a gimmick. Since what we have here is basically a world-class chocolate truffle, with our chestnut and dark chocolate mixture on the inside, perfectly coated with that sweet white chocolate on the outside, not to mention a fairly generous dose of brandy, just to hedge our bets. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that these are so delicious, I would serve these on Valentine's Day even if they look like an ear or a toe. But anyway, that's it. My take on Nipples of Venus. Whether you're going to make these as a Valentine's night dessert in a blatant attempt to try to get lots of compliments, or you're just going to whip up a batch to serve while re-watching Amadeus. Good movie, terrible song. But either way, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.